Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome, welcome to a brand new year. I'm Valerie McDowell, your writer, editor, author, but coaching consultant. This is Write It Out Wednesday, the day that we come on and we put you back at the top of your writing list. We are going into year four doing this. Woo! And we are excited. It's like so much has already gone on. It's just the fourth day of the year. We've got two birthdays tomorrow, plus I'm sure other people's birthday, but my mom and my goddaughter's birthday tomorrow. So happy pre-birthday to them. And then I just wanted to just um, let you know, hey, be sweets, good to see you. Happy New Year to you, my dear, that we're going to just um, add a little bonus um, starting next week on Tuesdays at noon. I know I have a lot of people available in the daytime, so I'm going to be available for a little Q&A or whatever questions you have. If you started a new project, if you need some support, if you need some help, I'm going to be give you a lunch hour to take care of those things so that we can get you moving in 2023. So again, this is the day that we come on um, and help put you back at the top of your writing list. I've been writing for well over 40 years that I help writers, um, aspiring authors to get their books written, printed, and published. And since 2019, and as of the end of 2022, we have helped 38 authors become either first time or we've got one who's a third time author in our program. So we are so excited about that. I'm just excited about 2023. What's on tap for you? So I've got a fun topic tonight. I'm not going to be before you long, but you know, life presents opportunities for you to talk about stuff. And so my topic is what we're not going to do in 2023 is, um, and so we're going to be talking about, um, yes, you're like, yay, what we're not going to do. We're, we're going to, I have three steps to let go of what's draining your time, your energy, and your resources. And that topic came to me because this morning at crack, oh, dawn, I got a phone call because I um, made a donation last year and they were coming to pick it up. And it's my beloved... Xbox car. I call her Xbox. Um, Toyota Scion, um, but the model is an XB. And I was like, what is this XB thing? So I've just Xbox. I've been calling her Xbox for several years. And so today was her final um, kind of rollout. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Because as I considered some things that I need to handle in 2023, I was like, what is going on in my life? What is draining my time, energy, and resources. And not that that necessarily was doing that, but as I looked at things I needed to do, one of the things that I had to contemplate at the end of 2022 was, do I add more resources into this, more time, more energy into this vehicle that has almost 300,000 miles? So she has definitely served her purpose for me. And so I'm just excited to pass her on and donate her to a good cause so that she can bless someone else. So I had to say goodbye, Xbox. But, you know, my family of blue cars is now back down to one. And so, you know, who knows what may be coming in the future. But anyway, I just want to talk and use that as a topic of what we're not going to do. And so what I chose not to do is allow that to be a drain on my time, my energy, and my resources. Because honestly, you know, having a car does take time, energy, and resources to maintain and keep up. But I needed some other uses of that money. I, I could use that space in my, my driveway, my <laughs> carport. And so what do you need to let go of in 2023? What are you not going to be sweets? What you not going to let happen in 2023? You know, and so, you know, three points, like I said, not going to be before you long. But how do we get rid of those things that are draining your time, your energy and resources? Well, the first thing we have to do is assess the situation. Okay. Assess the situation. How much time are you putting towards that? You know, that won't go towards, you know, reaching your goals. And one of the things um, I'm, I'm putting out an email and the topic is we're not doing resolutions. We're doing results this year. So it's like many of you that follow me and, you know, are of a certain age. It's like, I don't even do resolutions. Yeah, you're getting rid of negative people. Absolutely. It's like what, you know, particularly because they can definitely drain your time, energy, and resources. 
And thank you, Nasir, for watching us. And so it's like, what is draining you? It's like, we're getting rid. What we knock on doing 23 is allow people, places, circumstances, things to drain us of our energy, our time, and even our attention because we could be putting that to better use. And so how is it, you know, is it a pile of clothes? It's like, I've been clearing closets. It's like, I'm getting, I'm just like, you ain't wore it in a year and two years, maybe even three years to get rid of it. You know, you always going to be get something new or you're going to see something or whatever. It's like, let it go. Let it bless someone else, you know, donate it. Or if you are good with, you know, selling and Poshmark and all those kinds of things, go ahead, get that black piece of fabric and lay it out and make it look good. It's like, or you can come to my house and do it for me. But it's like, get rid of this stuff. Because the thing about it, when you have a new year, if you don't make space for the new things that are coming, for the God things that are coming, for the resources, for the people, for what you need to do, you're not going to have a space because you cannot go into new years, new relationships, new jobs, new things with a lot of the old stuff. You know, it's like um, Erica Badu's, you know, bag lady, you're bringing all these bags of things that you don't need to be bringing into this new year. So what are you getting rid of? So the first thing we're gonna do, assess the situation. Think about, because like I said, with that car, I had to assess. Do I wanna put new tires on? Because so if we get new tires on, then I gotta pay for the fee to dispose of the tires. I gotta switch them, I gotta get it balanced, I gotta get a line, wheel align. So, you know, I could easily go to Walmart because it's a small car and get like $65, $70 tires, but that's times four times balancing alignment this that and you know something else is going to ultimately happen because the car's got almost three hundred thousand miles so it's just like you know and as much as she has blessed me y'all i could put a hundred bags of mulch in the back of that car like it was doing its job okay <laughs> yes your kids old clothes get rid of it you know and even speaking of that like thank you annie i know my son thanked you but you know, she's got two girls. She's got three kids, but her first two are girls. And I have a brand new baby um, granddaughter who's five months old. And that transfer, she doesn't need those clothes anymore. Mila has some new clothes. It's like, because she's already outgrowing her zero to six months things. She's now into six to nine going into 12 months. So it's like you have to constantly recycle to make room for the new or you're just going to have piles and piles and piles and piles of stuff. What we knock on do <laughs> in 2023 is keep doing those same old things because we know what happens. We'll get the same results. So whether it's a pile of clothes, some unfinished paperwork, how many of you got your wills, your paperwork, you know, all those kinds of insurance, all that stuff. Passwords. Do you have a password book? If anything were to happen to you, can anybody close your accounts, open your accounts, get into your accounts? Those are some of the things we don't like to think about, but they are critical. So get some of those things done. So while you flipping through you know, cat videos, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's like, get some paperwork done and get rid of the other papers that you really don't need anymore. Exactly. Whatever I don't need, I try to donate. Yes. And the thing about it, even whenever you even bring something new into your house, what can you get rid of? You know, can there be an exchange? It's like, you know, maybe make it a rule. Like for every two things I bring in, I got to get rid of two to four. You know, then that way there's a balance and your house is not overrun with stuff. It's like, I know I'm not the type of person to live that very, you know, ascetic life that's very like, you know, clean. And it's like, I, I'm i very eclectic kind of person. Um, and as y'all see behind me, I like books too. <laughs> But I can in other ways, like I've gotten rid of all kinds of pots and pans and, you know, utensils that I don't use. It's like, how many slotted spoons do you need? Twelve? No, maybe two. <laughs> so it's just like, what can you pare down? You know, there are people who are just starting out. There are people who are coming to this country. There are all kinds of people. Can you make a donation? Can you give? I love the organizations that really help set up a whole house. So if you got a chair, it's in good condition and someone can use that or a bedroom you don't use anymore. No one's coming. Nobody's, you know, COVID kind of changed the whole connecting and being at people's houses for a long. So you might have a room that's been empty for like three years now. It's like, you know, make room. You know, make room, let allow another family, uh, you know, college student gets just getting started. They just get started on the road. They just graduated, whatever. Let them get started with with some support from you. OK, what else is going on? Home repairs, all those things that you need to get, done, get it done. OK, while you're inside, get it done. Don't allow things to build up because the same thing happens with your unfinished manuscript. Yeah, I know I was going to talk about the books, right? <laughs> so it's like how many stories do we have sitting on a shelf unfinished um, ready to go, but we just, it's like 
that's why I'm here. I'm your book coach, okay? Give me a call. Let's let's get this done, okay? All right. Can I inbox you? Yes, we'll definitely inbox you. So that was number one, assess the situation. What is number two? And for those just joining us, we are talking about what we're not going to do in 2023 is allow things to keep draining our time, our energy, and resources. So our first point was assess the situation. What's going on? What is actually doing the draining of your resources, time, and energy? And then take the temperature. You know, as you look at the things that are doing that, how do you feel about it? You know, what's the emotions attached to it? Is it because you don't want to let it go? Like you're like, oh my God, I remember I looked so good in that outfit. It was like, girl, mm, you know, or <laughs> was it your child's? Like I have a jacket in the basement of my house that my son had when he was little. He's 30 now with his own child, right? I was like, I'm going to put that in the bag and I'm going to give it to him. It's like, you can hold that for when she gets older, however long you need to hold that. We'll get it clean, maybe from dry cleaners, put it in this keepsake. And that's for her. I don't need to have it in my house. You can't fit it. I can't. It's it's for Mila. Yep, that's where it's going. <laughs> okay. But you have to like, what is it doing? What's the emotional attachment? You know, or are you just complacent? It's like, eh, every time I think about doing it, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, because sometimes how we think about something, you know, determines whether we actually get something done. And so have a good idea. You know, I mean, I love the 15 minute incremental kind of cleanups and things like that. It's like, what can I get rid of in 15 minutes? What can I clean in 15 minutes? It's like, we all have 15 minutes. It's just like, how many, you know, knee bends can I do in 15 minutes? How many stretches? You know, there's lots of things you can do in 15 minutes. I even teach in my course about how you can get your book written in 15 minutes a day, you know? So it's like, a, that's a long time. Have you ever done a speech? If you were talking for 15 minutes, you'd be like, oh my God, that's a lot. Yeah. So you can get a lot done in 15 minute increments. So, you know, and particularly when it's draining your energy, if like every time you think about something, it's like, that means, yeah, you need to deal with it. You know, it's sort of like if you need to deal with a family member, it's like, oh my God. But you know that the more you put it off, the problem doesn't go. So some things we need to just tackle head on. And just deal with it because then we know that we can move forward because it's, uh, let let it go. <laughs> we're not dragging. What we're not going to do <laughs> is bring all of those things into this new year. Um, it's just like, you know, going into a new home and bringing all the old furniture or going into a new job. It's like you want some new things, you know, at least have a new mindset about it. It's like, I'm going to do great. I'm so excited about the new opportunities that are coming up. I'm, I'm excited about what is happening. And so, you know, that's what we want for you. Hey, Annie, good to see you. Happy New Year to you. Hey, Risley, good to see you too. We got lots of people hanging out in here with us tonight. And so we are talking about what we're not going to do in 2023 is allow things to keep draining our energy, our time, and our resources. So just three points we're talking to you tonight. The first one, assess the situation. What's going on in your life? What are the things that you need to kind of look at that are doing that? Number two, take the temperature, meaning what is your emotional temperature that's attached to these things? Is there problems? You know, is, is there a keepsake? Is it sentimental value? Like, what is the thing? Or are you just lazy? You know, sometimes we just got to acknowledge what the problem is. Like, I'm lazy. I'm tired. Or, you know, whatever it is. So that you can tackle that thing. Or do you need help? Sometimes we need help. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen the show Hoarders. It's like they need help. It's like they need a whole team and trucks and some other stuff. Hopefully you don't have that situation. But in case you do. There are resources to help you get rid of stuff because especially in America, we have so much stuff here and it's just like, and we keep getting more and more stuff. It's like our parents didn't have, you know, I live in an older house and my closets are not big. Like I used to have a whole room that was a closet and I was like, oh, this is so great. But it's like, do I really need all this stuff? You know? And it's like, and that's the thing. It's just like, how much stuff do we need? Because when we're gone, who's going to be dealing with our stuff? I know plenty of people whose parents have passed on or relatives who've left them everything or they've had to deal with having to clean out a whole house. It's not a lot of, it's not fun, y'all. You may find a treasure here or there, but mostly it's stuff. You know, papers, computers, cups, and all kinds of things. Pocketbooks, like that was something. I was like, you know what? My son gave me a new purse for Christmas. It's like, we got rid of four old ones we weren't even using, okay? So that was a great exchange. It's like... In, in exchange for this one, I'm getting rid of four others. So I probably got a few more, you know, so it's like, what can you do? Because it's energy. It's like, as you go through your house, if you're stressing out, just looking around like, oh, or you're closing doors because you don't want to deal with stuff. 
And that means you need to get rid of some stuff. And then um, my final point is count the costs. Okay, we were assessing the situation. Okay, we were taking the temperature, like, and even not just yours, but how do other people in your household feel? Like, if there are other people that live with you, are they stressed out because of it? Are they like, I don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see it? You know, what's happening? You know, because you could be creating an environment in which everybody starts feeling the same way. Either they're ignoring it or everybody's upset and stressed all the time because of all the stuff. But if it's taking your energy, if it's taking your time, if it's taking your resources, what we're not going to do in 2023 is allow that to keep going on. And so the third point, account the costs. Because what is the weekly, monthly, yearly cost of maintaining? As I was sharing about Xbox, it's just like that car. It's like, as I thought about how much am I going to have to invest into this car this year? In addition to monthly car insurance, it's just like, like I said, do I want to put four tires on and do all the other maintenance? You know, um, I just got to notice it was going to have to go through um, emissions in March. It's just like this car is from 2006. It's got almost 300,000 miles on it. Is it going to make it? <laughs> and if it doesn't, do I want to do the work to get it up to speed? And it was just like, I kept saying no to all of those options. No, I don't really want to buy four tires. No, I don't really want. It's like I have a, a brand new car pretty much that only have 7,000 miles on it. It's like, because I don't really drive nowhere. I just came back from vacation. I flew and was on a boat. So it's like, y'all, yeah, people that know me, they know I drive as necessary, <laughs> but I will fly in a second, you know, or take some other mode of transportation. And so anyway, it's like, what is the cost to you? Like there was no balancing, there was no value being added with the expenses that I was going to incur. But what about you? You know, it's like, um, what's on your to-do list, you know, for 2023? Is it is it something that um, you need to do? Do you need to save money? So do you need to eliminate a habit? You know, are you a Starbucks person or whatever your favorite drink or something is? Do you need to eliminate that? You know, what, what are some things that are costing you more than the value they're bringing back to you? You know, it's like count the costs. It's like before you even make investments in things, count the costs. Are you going to get what you need out of this? It's like for people that are writing their book, it's like, are you prepared for the investment in, in getting your book done? It's like, it's a lot of work. You got to get it edited. You got to get it cleaned up. It's like, but it's always worth it. It's like, ask my 38 authors. It is definitely worth it that when they finally get to the finish line, they finally get to publish. It is definitely a cost that they want it to count. But there's some other things. It's just like, um, cause there's always going to be lots of voices and people and things like, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? It's like, what do you need? Because you need to know how you, um, you know, how you show up in the world, you know, how would you talk about your book or how will you talk about your business or whatever it is you do? What kind of friends do you want in your life? You, you know, um, be sweet. You talked about getting rid of negative people. It's like, absolutely. Because you, you know, that's another assessment. It's like, who are the people in my life? Who am I hanging out with? You know, how are they advancing my life? Am I adding value to their life even? Because it could be you, you could be the problem. <laughs> you know, there's a, what Taylor Swift new song? Yeah, I'm the problem, <laughs> you know? And it's like, you need to be honest with certain things. It's like, if the, you know, because all relationships are not for life. You know, there are some that are, but some are seasonal. Some are for a particular purpose. And then others are lifetime. But you need to be able to assess and evaluate which ones these relationships are, you know, because sometimes you try to make um, certain relationships more than they are, you know, like you might think it's a friendship when in the other person's eyes, it really was just a business transaction. You know, they were like, I'm not, I'm not really your friend, <laughs> you know, but you thought you were because of the time and the energy and the resources you were spending. But in their eyes, it was not an equal, you know, it, it was not that that balance. And so you need to kind of assess some things and maybe pull back or add other people in your life because um, adding is always good. <laughs> Subtracting sometimes is even better, you know, so you need to assess what you need to do for 2023, because what we're not going to do is bring a lot of baggage, a lot of stuff that we have let go of we're not gonna go back and get it or we tucked it in a pocketbook or a bag somewhere in the closet and pull it out we're not doing that you know because we want to move forward and we want to move forward freely you know I was very excited when I was on my trip because I didn't have a lot of stuff you know I could move about I could do this I could jump here I can go here especially when we went on this adventure where we had to get through this little tiny crack it was like this triangle space and you couldn't be like carrying a bunch of stuff to get through. You had to maneuver your body and do a lot of stuff. So in order for you to be flexible uh, this year, in order for you to be able to maneuver and do some things that maybe 
maybe you weren't able to do before, you're going to have to let go of some of that baggage. Let go of some of that weight. Let go of those things that are taking your time, your energy, and your resources. So that's all I got for you today. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, and again, I'm going to be doing some Q&A on Tuesday afternoons at noon starting next week. So join me if you're available. If you have any questions about what do you want to do, I'm, I'm just uh, blocking that time at least for January to say, hey, bring your questions, bring your questions. It's going to be in my private Facebook group. Many of you are already a part of it. If you've taken my course or if you haven't, put your information down and we'll get you in. And I just want to be a resource during this month to at least get you off to a good start. So that's where we are. So thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Valerie McDowell, your writer, editor, author, book coach, and consultant. And I'll see you next time. Bye.